So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where Ukraine forms an empire in 2022. Now admittedly I've been kind of mean to Ukraine as of recently due to certain world events but uh, we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where they form an empire. Now obviously this video is going to be tilted towards the favor of Ukraine so don't get offended if your country gets absolutely smacked around by Ukraine. Today's video is an add-on to I guess daily upload week so normally it would have ended yesterday but I'm going to be doing two more videos just because I can but other than that I'm kind of exhausted from doing videos. So yeah today's video and tomorrow's video are all extra videos. You guys should also probably check out the 25k merch. I'm probably not going to promote it as much as I was when it first came out but uh link to that in the description. Make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new and let's go and get started all right so here we have ukraine colored in as the color of red and it's going to be that way throughout the entire video now ukraine is surrounded by some pretty powerful countries such as russia and poland and they're also surrounded by a bunch of countries that are protected by other countries so like belarus is protected by russia and we can probably assume that if Moldova were to be invaded, then Romania would aid them. So Ukraine decides to go to war with Slovakia and Hungary. Specifically, first off, we have them going to war with Slovakia. They push into the east of the country and head towards their capital. After taking over a majority of the country, we have them surrendering. And with that, we have Ukraine fully annexing Slovakia. Now, I know that these borders are pretty horrible. I mean... That's kind of disgusting. But it is only going to be this way for a little bit, and uh, now they're going to be invading Hungary. So, with their troops already stationed in Slovakia, they start their advance into Hungary. They merely start to focus all their troops in the middle as they want to get to Budapest as soon as possible. After gathering much of their army, they push down and capture the capital city. And from here, we have some more pushing in until eventually Hungary surrenders. And once again, Ukraine is doing um some pretty interesting border tactics here. They're making everyone want to look away from their country in order for them to kind of sneak attack them. I mean, obviously, no one wants to look at this mess. This is horrible. So in order to fix their borders, they start to eye up Romania. Now, I'm pretty sure I said this already, but remember that Ukraine is buffed in this video, so they're a lot stronger than they normally would be in real life. So when Romania gets absolutely slapped around here by Ukraine, don't get mad at me. Like I said, they're buffed. So anyway, we have Ukraine declaring war on Moldova, and consequentially, we have Romania declaring war on Ukraine. Now, like I said, Ukraine was ready for this. They knew that this would happen. So while they are pushing into Moldova's east, they are also pushing into Romania as well. West. Now specifically where they are lacking here is in their kind of like I guess central Ukrainian land. They had a majority of their troops over here in Slovakia and Hungary and then they also had like a defensive over here but it was also kind of posed to invade but they really don't have much of a defense up north here. So we have Romania taking advantage of that and pushing into Ukrainian territory. Over in Moldova the entire country is wiped out and down south Romania pushes up into southern Ukraine. In the west Ukraine continues to have a lot of progress in invading Romania and in the north they even start to push Romania back. Eventually all of Moldova is captured by Ukrainian forces and Romania is pushed out of Ukraine. From here we have one ginormous front line against Romania pushing down towards Bucharest. They eventually shoot across and capture the capital city and after taking all the Romanian coastline we have Romania surrendering. So taking a look at this peace treaty here we have Ukraine becoming thick. By that I mean we have all of Hungary's old claims in Romania going over to I guess Ukraine but technically it's the Hungarian state but uh, I show the states at the end of this video. So just wait out to then. And then we have Ukraine annexing all Moldova in a big chunk of Eastern Romania. And then we're left with this. Now I know there was a country here in history that looks somewhat like this. I, I at first said Wallonia, but that's Belgium. I don't know why I thought of that. But it's something, I think it's something like that. But tell me in the comments whatever this was because I, I forgot and then I can't find it on Google. But anyway, we have Ukraine's first puppet down here in Romania. So from here we have Ukraine kind of funneling into a superpower. They've taken over a lot of valuable land. And uh, they have a lot of potential into becoming a major power. So they start to ramp up their military and head over to the borders of Poland. From here, after a lot of preparation, training, and equipment gathering, we have Ukraine declaring war on Poland. So Ukraine starts to invade Poland through the Ukrainian parts, while we have Poland pushing down into Slovakia. Eventually, we see a pretty large Polish presence in Slovakia, while they are also able to push back Ukraine's front line. Now, the reason they were able to do that is because Ukraine was rearranging troops in order to take back Slovakia, in which they do so successfully, and from here, they push the Poland. So now Ukraine has one giant front line to kind of, I guess, manage. But Poland does see a weakness here and they push through the middle, which kind of cuts off these two front lines. And then they push down into Ukraine. They also managed to push Ukraine out of the Slovakian front and for the second time push into Slovakia. Up north though, we see a lot of Ukrainian success as they start to get towards Warsaw. This then immediately prompts Poland to retreat out of Ukrainian territory and allows Ukraine to reset up their front line. So now Poland is on the defense as uh, Ukraine has kind of broken through the front line and uh, they might be in a little bit of trouble here. Eventually, after months of fighting, we have Ukraine getting towards Warsaw, 
They take the city, and with that, we have Poland surrendering. Taking a look at the peace treaty with Poland, we have Ukraine taking a big old chunk out of southeastern Poland. And when you zoom out on the map, you can see that Ukraine definitely has a presence in the world. So with this, where does uh, where does Ukraine expand? They can either expand into Russia, which may not actually go well for them, or they can kind of go into the Balkans. And since I'm a man that can take criticism and doesn't really care what you say in the comments, we have Ukraine declaring war on Serbia. This then immediately prompts Kosovo to declare war on Serbia, as well as Albania. And then we have ourselves another third or fourth Balkan war. Montenegro joins the side of Serbia, North Macedonia joins the side of Albania, Croatia joins with Ukraine, and Bosnia explodes into a million pieces. With this, we see no other country join this war because if they did, they would get absolutely clapped. Ukraine and Croatia pushing the northern Serbia, Albania and Kosovo pushing the Montenegro. While this is happening though, we do see Serbia pushing the Kosovo and a lot of northern Macedonia. This really doesn't seem as effective though as Ukraine and Croatia are sweeping down into Serbia. After losing their capital, they retreat out of north Macedonia and Kosovo. We didn't see Montenegro fall, and with this, we have Serbia is surrendering over to Ukraine. All right, so taking a look at the new Balkan map here, a lot of people are going to be mad, but I don't care. Uh, we have Albania and Kosovo being united and taking some lands from Montenegro and Serbia. North Macedonia gets a little bit out of Serbia, Croatia gets a little bit out of Serbia, and the rest is thrown to Ukraine. They give a little bit over to the Romanian puppet, and then they kind of puppet the rest and take a little bit for themselves. And once again, we're looking at a big, thick Ukraine here. So now, what does Ukraine do from here? Um, They've kind of built up a lot. Uh, would they be able to take on Russia in real life? Obviously not without help, but in this universe, they are buffed, like, a lot. So let's go ahead and say that they might be able to do such a thing. Let's also say that they forge an alliance with Turkey, Georgia, and Azerbaijan, as well as Finland. And together, all of these countries declare war on Russia. We then see Belarus join the war. And from here, the great Russia-Ukrainian war begins. I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be saying those words in a few months. Anyway, right off the bat, we have Ukraine pushing into Crimea and retaking their lands. We then see an Uno reverse card as we see Ukraine pushing into Western Russia. Up north, we have Finland taking a full-on front line into Russia. In the Caucasus, we see all three these countries pushing up and we see things in here getting heated up although we will eventually see them getting cooled down. Ukraine pushes up into Belarus, and Russia pushes into northeastern Ukraine. Up north, we actually have Finland taking over St. Petersburg in a very surprising battle, but they do so pretty successfully. And from here, we see them jolt across and disconnect Russia, then take the opportunity and send out a special squadron to take over all this land, while the main army kind of focuses on their front line down south. Speaking of down south, the Caucasus continue their push up into southern Russia, and eventually Ukraine connects their front line with them. Up in Belarus, we see Ukrainian forces capture their capital. From here, they're disconnected from the rest of Belarus and taken over, which then prompts the country to surrender. We then see Russian forces being kicked out of Ukraine, while over here in the Caucasus area, we see Russia pushing back Ukraine and the Caucasus countries. They then push down into Georgia and split the country in two. From here, they do the same with Azerbaijan, but instead they take their coasts, and the Caucasus are wondering where Turkey is at. They're about right there. Anyway, up north, we see Ukraine continuing their push into Russia as they cross over the Belarusian border. They then start to push out of their northeast, and Russia has a lot on their plate. And just to give ourselves a look at that this is what russia is dealing with so um they're dealing with three different fronts right now um it was two fronts but then they kind of fixed that problem but eventually it is going to be two fronts again and then i wouldn't doubt that it would be one front up north we see finland continuing their push into russia as they unite with their st petersburg front from here they use special forces to take over northern russia while their main force continues to push downward over in the Caucasus region we see turkey finally arriving and helping out their allies from here russia is pushed out of the region and the front line is restarted this time it is a lot faster though as we see russia on the defense as they're being pushed back pretty rapidly. The Ukrainian front line is re-established, and overall the red team is sweeping the area. Eventually Ukraine and Finland meet up in the Baltic area, and we see this giant front line being formed. We have large amounts of northern Russia being captured, and we see Russia abandoning their southern region. From here we see Russia make a counter-offense into Belarus, which goes pretty well, but they are unable to contact Latvia. We also see another counter-attack in Ukraine as they push down towards the border. After contacting it, they are kind of held at the stalemate as Ukraine has a pretty good defense in this area. And finally up north we see Russia pushing back towards this lake right here i don't know what it's called now you might be asking yourself how is russia able to do this um well winter that's how so eventually uh, the winter comes to an end and we see russia getting absolutely clapped ukrainian allies after building up through the winter start a full-on invasion and eventually moscow is captured with this and honestly seeing no point in continuing we have russia surrendering now you might be thinking russia surrendering that's kind of odd well, um, to be honest, I don't want to keep going. They're, they would just invade all this. There's no point. So taking a look at this peace treaty here, we have a lot happening. In the north, we have Finland taking over all of this land. Now, this looks amazing. This should be in real life because this looks really good. Down south, we have Turkey getting literally nothing other than reparations. Azerbaijan gets a little bit of land and George get a little bit of land. And the rest is given to Ukraine, who annexes a lot of Belarus and a lot of Russian territory. And they also puppet this southern Russian area. And with this, we have Ukraine forming its empire in 2022 
So let's go ahead and take a look at the states of Ukraine, and of which there aren't actually that many. We have Ukraine annexing a large portion of all this, and they get all this to themselves. We have a Polish state, a Slovakian state, and then a Hungarian state. And then of course we have these puppets of Serbia and Montenegro. Romania and then southern Russia. Now I drew these borders and I think they're perfect. Like look at this Poland one. This this is definitely perfect. And then also like the border between Hungary and Slovakia. Bam. That that was perfect. Anyway, that is gonna do it for this video where Ukraine forms an empire in 2022. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Once again, link to the merch in the description. Pretty cool design. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.